it's coming, dude. Disclaimer, don't forget. Oh, hold on. Let me swivel. Here it comes. Well, hello. <laughs> What's this? Pro Scott, what are you reading? I'm reading Profit First. Come on. What? what you... Oh, man. I'm reading uh, Get Over Your Damn Self. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's very fitting for you. Is the word apropos? <laughs> apropos, yes. How's it going, my friend? going wonderfully well is that even the way to say it i don't know it's going great well sure that's correct uh welcome everyone to nightcap with the land geek guys and that's us it's, uh, like episode 100 yes uh recently picked up by netflix hulu 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 and uh we're gonna be on uh, youtube red right next to the cobra kai next uh, yeah, i love that show yeah very good show <laughs> Scott, what oh, is behind you? Did you? Are you in a new location? That's just, uh, I don't know, a little upgrade. Everything's the same over here, but over there, I don't know. Are you somewhere else? Matt Forbes, uh, is he intimidates me with his, uh, his backdrop, so I thought I had to step it up a little bit. That's not real? It looks like you're at the beach. I know, right? Looks pretty real. <laughs> it is pretty real. It's like I'm sitting in a barn. Yeah, I was just at the bar. Hey, Mark's watching. Hey, Mark. Mark, it's great to see you. Well, I can't see you. It's great to know you're watching. Scott Scott has control all over, over all the Facebook comments now, so it's uh, I'm powerless. I don't yeah, know who's watching. Thing. I don't know any comments. It's just it's very difficult for me to release that kind of control. But you know what? It came with the power of uh, Zoom. Be live. I don't want to say anything bad about it, but uh, I'd never use it. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't work. Zoom is so much better. Scott, did you change topics? Uh, I mean, we had well, something posted. Talk to me about this. Tonight was supposed to be the out of the close or something, and then all of a sudden, it's a switch. So what, it's a bait and switch. I had a great idea at the beginning of the week to talk about the art of the close, right? And I don't know. I just think it's such a big topic that we wanted to be very prepared. So we have some ideas stewing. Maybe some special guests. We Maybe say. a special guest uh, huh? uh, in the queue. So, so we decided to change topics last minute. So everybody who is excited to watch a show <laughs> about the art of the clothes, we're just going to have to postpone a week. So next week, it might be... 9.30 Central, it might be 10.30 Eastern. You get it? I get it. I have to apologize. <laughs> we have to apologize to everybody out there because it can be confusing when when we post that it's at 10.30 Eastern or 9.30 Central, that type of mm. thing. So we'll try to get on top of that. We'll a call bit. this episode Catfish. What? Catfish. You ever see that movie Catfish? It's when they make you think something's going to happen. There was actually a movie like that. And what happened was I watched it and you kept thinking it was like filmed like uh, in this kind of real life type camera angles and like something bad's going to happen. And the whole reality is that nothing bad ever happened. So anyway, bait and switch Catfish. It's not the eye of the clothes. What are we going to talk about them? I and mean, we got to bring something to the folks. We're all about, you know, content, you know, a little bit of humor and content. What's the content going to be tonight? All right, so um, we're going to talk about the distraction. Yeah, right. We're going to talk about the difference between when you first get into this business and when you first take off. Okay. Okay. We're going to use an acronym. Take off? Do you mean like flight school takeoff? Or, I mean, take off. You make me think of flying. 
Flight school is a great analogy. We can use flight school as a, as a great analogy for this. I wasn't sure where you're going. I was just clarifying. Yeah, yeah. Good, good play on words, right? Yes. Uh, so, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little acronym for the beginning stages of this business, and we're going to have that same series of letters for the end stage of this business. It's probably some sort of really correct English word to describe what you're talking about. I don't know it, but... Uh, you don't know acronym? No, but I mean, is that what it is? Is that truly what it is? Pretty sure that's what it is. Like my, for or instance, facsimile thereof. For instance, my my land company is called Home Base Properties. Base is actually an acronym for my boys: Ben, Alex, Sam, and Ethan. All this time I've known you, and you've never divulged that to me. Yeah, is that cool? It it's is an cool. acronym, Mike. I like it. Yeah, I like so that. Anyway, we're going to do an acronym. Okay, what is it? And and this is a disclaimer: we uh, we do not mean to offend anyone with our acronym. We just thought it was uh, clever. I hope it's not offensive. You hope it's not what? Offensive. I hope it's not offensive too. Oh, I think you said that. Well, <laughs> as long as you disclaim. But anyway, the acronym we're going to use is ADHD. Well, that means distracted. I mean, there's obviously a, a more probably clinical and scientific description. But yeah, in my mind, if, you know, ADHD, I think, you know, that's something that... Uh, Diagnosed, underdiagnosed, but I mean, the fact of distraction, that's something that's very common in our society, right? We have so many, you and I were talking the other day, right, of all the different ways we communicate with people, this this, this, uh, this kind of fragmented communication, right? I mean, if you look at it, what, we got Facebook, we got Facebook Messenger, that is, Instagram, uh, what else is out there? Uh, just your phone Twitter. calls, text, me Twitter, MySpace. I mean, MySpace, that's got you dating yourself, there's nobody on MySpace. <laughs> I bet there are some people. I bet Mark Podolsky was on MySpace at one time. Well, at one time. I mean, currently, there's no one on MySpace. But yeah, so, for, you know, distraction is all everywhere. And trying to start a new business model and, and be distracted, boy, that's difficult, right? Oh, for sure. It's a recipe for... Disaster. It is, really, right? As opposed to a recipe for... Success? You, you complete me. I mean, wait, I'm just, wait, hold on. <laughs> is this it? We just did the segment without anybody we just knowing? We did the segment. We didn't even announce the segment. <laughs> we just snuck up on you. So let's talk about it. What's the acronym then again? You said it was what? AD? ADHD. So. Okay, yep. All right. So let's say you are. Break it down for me. Huh? Okay. Break it down for me. Stop. A. Because you said it's in an acronym. So what's A stand for? A. Well, first, let me play a song. That symbolizes. You're gonna play a song. That symbolizes the first letter. You ready? I'm I, I'm ready, but. Uh, Are you ready? Did I'm, I do it at the wrong time? No, no. I, I I'm very curious as to what song this is. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite songs, by the way. Oh, really? You love this song? I have no idea who sings it, but I remember waking up in, uh, in middle school, with my alarm clock, this was playing. <laughs> it's Celine Dion. Oh, then it was in middle school. Maybe she's doing a remake. <laughs> you get, you got to know this. No, but all right, so, so like, the all by myself. All by myself. A in ADHD stands for alone. Alone. Yeah, well, you, I get it. So when you, when you first purchase the toolkit, you're thinking about this business model, you hear a couple of podcasts. A lot of people come to us because they hear Mark. He's on a lot of podcasts. Um, then they come on, they listen to podcasts, and and then they uh, they start to get interested in the model. They begin to understand that it's real. Like I say, it's not some late night infomercial. They buy the toolkit. But you're right; they are in essence on their own. I mean, they have the uh, the knowledge and the expertise from uh, Mark and what he's conveying. But we always say there's not an information gap; it's an execution gap. There's, there's so much information in that toolkit. Uh, it's absolutely, it's actually, it can be overwhelming, right? So you're alone in the sense of you have to take that in, do what with it? Convert it. Convert it, yes. And you yeah, have no actually, Sherpa. You have no Sherpa. No Sherpa. It's, it's very difficult. Now, there are people that can scale mountains without Sherpas, but. Wim Hof. Right. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> <That guy. laughs> so uh, so you're alone okay so um 
what happens if you're alone? What, I mean, are we gonna do you want to go like an act, you know, letter for letter, or you want to run through the whole thing and then kick into the next dot? What, 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 what would be best, you think? Whatever you think is best. Give me the whole thing. Just break it down. Why don't you just right, let's do it. Let's break it down. Do yeah, break it down. All alone. Right. Alone. Now comes D. D is for alone. D is for distracted. Oh, okay. H is for hungry. Well, that's a positive thing. You are hungry because you really want this, right? This is something that you've taken a major step. You've invested in toolkit, but you're hungry. D is for difficult. It is difficult. Did I already say? Is that why you're laughing? Did I say the word without knowing it? You, you told me to go through the letters, you know. Yeah, but the whole thing is like you say something I elaborate on. Isn't that like a one-two punch? It's a one-two punch, yes. So tell me about the distracted part of, of, of things when you first get started. Well, I'll tell you what, my first uh, coach, uh, um, Jeff Axon was saying to me, uh, you know, when he's one, when you know, we went, he brought me to meet Mark in Arizona. It was incredible. It was like, uh, this is when I knew it was going to be a life changing event, but he did warn me about this distraction. And the distraction was the fact that there's this whirlwind in the business. What's the whirlwind? Well, there's the mailing and the marketing. These are the core, um, you know, areas where you take massive action, generate results, but the rest of the stuff, it's great, but it's just, it's whirlwind, it's distraction. It's like, hey, let me get the best website out there, right? Let, let me uh, let me get over there and stop my, the big blog going on. Let me, let me spend hours doing this, hours doing that, and then not spend concentrated, focused time on what's gonna move the business forward. So I think distracted, you nailed it on the head there, Scott, distracted. Well, thanks, I appreciate that. You're like a hammer. Well so let's give some advice to some of those people who are feeling a little uh, distracted right now. Okay. Here, here's my here's my advice. You're so small right now. There you go. That's what well, Laura I said. I sit too close to the screen, so I'm trying to change it up. Now you now you call me out on it. Am I too close? I must be too close to the screen. No, no, no. She said I was too close. I had to now work on standing back from the screen. And then Scott <laughs> calls me out and calls me tiny. <laughs> Here's, here's some advice for people who are feeling distracted. With okay. Emotions. Keep it simple. Okay. Don't worry about the website. Don't worry about the LLC right away. Don't worry about uh, this, that, and the other thing. Worry about mailing, mailing, mailing. Every single day. What are you doing? Mailing, mailing, mailing. And then once you start getting some properties, marketing, marketing, marketing. Keep it simple. I thought you just said mark, 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 but you say mark it. Mark it. Mark it. It's true. Hyper focus on the essentials, like, right? Trade in this kind of soft focus. You know what soft focus is? Like when you're, uh, you know, they say sometimes you're out walking and you want to be scanning the area. And you're in a business model. Soft focus would be like, you're just kind of looking at everything. Like when I tell people to go through the toolkit, I'm always like, first things first. I say you watch it like you're watching something on Netflix, like a casual, chill, relax, watch it, become familiar with the terminology, become familiar with just the lay of the land. But then you're going to trade in that kind of soft focus for the laser focus and focus on what's going to hyper focus on what's going to, what's the first thing you got to hyper focus on? The bedrock of our business is, remember Scott Todd's five plates, plate number one, mailing but the pre-basics to the mailing is the county research. You need to hyper-focus on where you're going to... Now, the toolkit does have an advantage. It has the secret county list built into it. And, uh, you know, so it's got... But you know what? That's great. It is. It is phenomenal, actually. But you need to understand why there's... You know, it's... Yes, we've all done deals there. But when you begin to understand why we did deals there in the first place, now you can feed yourself. So um, you need to hyper-focus. County research. That, so how to remove yourself from distraction? Hyper focus on the essentials. County research. Hyper focus on the essentials and focus on the present. When you're first starting this business, I think you got to kind of kind of focus on the present a little bit, right? Because if you get too worried about um, you know reaching all these monumental goals, uh, it just might be a little bit overwhelming for you. I got a Who question. I got a question. I don't want to interrupt <laughs> okay. you. It's like I've always interrupted. <laughs> Are we have any viewers? I can't see. Any questions? We got some viewers. No questions yet. Anybody hit us up for questions? Um, the robes are back. Ben Welsh is excited about that. 
And then Margaret LaRue, uh, she agrees with me, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. That's uh, what you do, keep it simple when you're first starting out. Well, thank you guys. And then on the robes, I'm gonna crack open a, crack open a stout. Wait, 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 it's not refill time yet. This is my fill, I haven't even started. Oh, okay, all right. So the, th the third word in ADHD is hungry. Yeah, so that's kind of like perplexing be or could be confusing because it's, it's, it's really what the experience is, but it's not truly negative, is it? It's, it's not negative, not at all. No, because it's you totally want this, right? You want this business to work. You want this to get up off the ground running. You want to convert information to action. So you're hungry. Yeah, for sure. And you have to be hungry. I mean, you know, when I started with the toolkit, almost three years, it's going to be three years ago, uh, this, the end of July, I was so hungry. I wanted to change my life so bad. I was getting up at five in the morning, staying up late. So I was overwhelmed, but I was hungry. So I really forced me to buckle down. So Talk to me more about that. What'd you do? I mean, how did you, I mean, you're hungry, you're, you're a little distracted, you're alone. What do you do? You know what? I just, uh, I had faith in the toolkit at the time. I had, I had faith in the, in the county list. So, I mean, I, I said, I remember sitting down on my couch with that county list and I probably emailed half of the counties on that list for a, for a tax delinquent list. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I was green. I didn't really know how to do county research. Uh, I just saw, saw that list of counties and I thought, okay, well, let's check this place out. Let's check out the county websites. Let's see what's available online. Oh, look at that. There are some things available online. Look, there's a list online. Like, oh, look at this county. There's a list. There's like a list of 300 people, right? So those, those, <laughs> those little bits of discovery actually made me focus more and gave me more motivation to move forward so i don't know i was just i don't know i just i got a, I was just, I got a song for you but i don't know how you did it how do you play can i play a song and you'll hear it well of course no i i don't know if you will well you played the you played the intro yeah but i had to share it i don't want to really share my oh, screen well. how'd you play that what why was you sing it? why don't you sing it Nah, this isn't one of those. <laughs> Karaoke night on Nightcap. Uh, let me try this. Here we go. Tell me if you can hear this. Ready? This is a song for you. Can you hear that? Yes. You had a song. Now I got a song. Hungry Eyes. <laughs> hungry Eyes. <laughs> I had Hungry Eyes. Mike, what movie is that from? Well, I have the advantage of looking at the screen right now. It says Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing, 1987. Am I right? Yeah. I think yeah. I'm right. Love that movie. All right. So, so you're hungry. You're alone. You're distracted. You're hungry. And it's difficult, right? That's the D, right? It's difficult. That's the D. It is difficult. It is difficult to sift through all of the... Honestly, you look at the toolkit, it's overwhelming. I mean, there's so much information in there. It is difficult to sift through that information. It is difficult to know where to start. Uh, so that that's just one of the things when you're first starting out. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it's funny because the business model itself, I don't think is difficult. I think it's, right. the, it's the getting out of your own way, embracing massive action, but that's going to come really with belief. That's why I always tell people the first land deal is the most important. The first land deal brings proof of concept. The first land deal empowers you. It allows you to really kick it into gear with massive action. Cause you're like, my, I just did this, right? I just did this and I'm, and I'm, and I can do it again. And like Mark says, if you can do one, you can do two. If you can do two, you can do 10. If you did 10, you can do a hundred. I mean, it's, it's the scaling part of the business. Well, that's, again, we talked about this last time, right? The niche within the niche, the micro niche, the scaling. But we won't go there tonight. We don't want to be distracted, right? No, we definitely no. don't want to be alone or hungry. Well, we want to be hungry. We don't want to make it difficult. All right, Mike, good good first half. I think it's First time. half's over? I think it's, I think it's time. Well, we're done with the ADHD, right? The ADHD well, in the beginning. We're done with the first part, but we have to convert it. I want to know what the new ADHD is. Yeah, but listen. Okay, I'm listening. 
we got things to do. First off, we got two questions. Ready? Mm -hmm. Wait, somebody asked a question. Yeah, we got a couple of questions. Okay. Margaret LaRue, examples of county research. That, that's what she asked. What are you, so. Good question. That, so Margaret, when, when we talk of, about county research, we, we basically talk about, you know, there are 3,000 counties in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, many of those are great for land investing. How do we figure out where we're going to do this? And it may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, the best places to do this business are in places where other land investors are. So that's part of the county research. You want to see what markets are hot, see what markets are moving properties. Um, and then county research also, there's something to be said for a really good county website that has a really good GIS system, a geographical, geographical information systems website. Okay. Uh, that can be very helpful in acquiring information about properties. I have a question. Yes, sir. No, I have a statement. I don't like a to interrupt anyone. Yeah. So from now on, I'm just going to physically raise my hand. And when you're yeah, ready, like you call upon me. All yeah. the power to you. Right, so, right. So you know what county research really is? What's that? Pre-marketing. Yeah, you're right. Really what you're doing is, so when you end up getting land there, you've already established all the information. You can be the knowledgeable seller. Someone calls you up and asks you questions. You know about it. County research is, is huge, right? I mean, if you do this right, the rest of the business falls into place. I mean, we make our money on the buy side. The excitement's on the buy side. But what comes before the buy side is the mailing. And before the mailing comes the list scrubbing. And before the list scrubbing is getting the list. Before getting the list comes county research it's deciding where you're going to do this business model and there is a shortcut just look where all the where you know i always say where the wild things are where the investors are because that was a i liked that book as a kid uh so that's why i, I have that analogy in case you were wondering scott no I, I love that analogy that's not the first time i've heard that from you i like that a lot oh I love reading that book so wait a minute you had another question before we, another uh, question yeah. this is from, from eric justin Oh, Eric, how are you? And he says, what was the tipping point for you guys to get into coaching? Yeah, I was um, tired of really just spending way too much time trying to figure it all out. Like I was getting traction, right? I was getting some traction, but um, it just was taking too much time. And, and, you know, realizing that there was a better way, realizing that, hey, there are people that are already doing this in a way that's like, really works really successful and they're doing it when you listen to them in a way that's not involving all day long in front of the computer so i think to me it was just like realizing a you know that this is real it's a real business model it's not some pie in the sky it's not some infomercial late night where you're going to buy something like a vacuum cleaner this is like a real deal like this business model works if you're consistent and you stick with the fundamentals but getting assistance and skipping as mark always says you know you and you bring it up all the time, Scott, right? Time scaling. Uh, this is about, you know, you can you can truly make more money, but you can't create time. You just can't. And the time you lose is not coming back, right? It's just not. Um, money you can bring back, time you can't. So I think that was probably tipping point in my how about you, Scott? That's a great question. I mean, for me, I had been probably on a one year uh, journey trying to figure out what I wanted to do next or what I wanted to do in addition to my current lifestyle because I knew something had to change. So I had, I listened to every single rich dad, poor dad book I could in my car on the, the, you know, to and from work. I listened to tons of podcasts, which is where I found Mark. You know, I heard, I heard Mark on a podcast. I was hooked from the beginning. I got the toolkit. Eric, my first aha moment was when I bought a property for 700 bucks and two weeks later sold it for 2,800. Uh, my second aha moment was meeting the community at a boot camp, meeting Mark, meeting Scott Todd, meeting all these amazing people in this room who have all sorts of different backgrounds, who are having success with land investing. And it just felt right. The community felt right. You're in a, you're in a group, you're in a room full of people who uh, all have similar goals and it was just a feeling that I was on the right path. And, and 
more so for Aaron, my wife, she, she wears her heart on her sleeve. So she knew from like hour one, it took me a little while to get through boot camp to realize, yeah, this is what I want to do. But by the time we left there, we were ready to jump in and we just knew it was going to have, it was going to take a leap of faith and we would have to invest to change our lives. So that was my tipping point. Wow. Excellent. All right. Heavy, deep, too deep for nightcap. All right. Lighten it up. Lighten it up. All right. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. What's next? We're ready for a segment. Hold on. Where'd my sheet go? I got all these sheets, Mike. Holy sheet. I got to I got to update. I got to update to a electronic version of my hand on. See? So everybody last week, we introduced a new segment. Oh boy. Or, or I introduced a new segment in honor of Mike Zeno. It's called the Boston Lega segment of the week. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, this is a segment where the community will learn a new Bostonian word. All right. Uh, it's either a word that is commonly mispronounced by Bostonians. AKA mean, Mike well, Zeno. Well, what do you mean by the rest of the country? Wait, well, right, right. Around Scott. Or, or it's a slang word that none of us understand. All right. <laughs> so, Mike, here's here's how it works. I, I picked on I picked another word that is commonly known to all of all of humankind. All right, I'll give my best I'm, shot. I'm, I'm going to spell the word, and, as, and you're going to repeat it as back. Pat Benatar would say, "Hit me with your best shot." Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. B l i n k e r. Blinka. Blinka. It's like you blinka. turn on the car. Yeah, shut it's on the bl- car. Shut your blinker off. That guy didn't have the blinker on. What's he doing? The blinker. You hear that all the time. The guy didn't even have his blinker on. These should maybe be words related to land, but I like just the random words. Do you know what they call the blinker in uh, Wisconsin? No. The directional. Oh, you, didn't man. Turn, you didn't turn your directional on. <laughs> your direct. On. I think it's the goofiest thing ever. All right, that was a good that was a good refill. That was a good uh, Boston Laggy segment. Now we need this segment because I'm empty. All right, no Matt Forbes tonight, so let's have a shout out to him. Yeah, Matt Forbes is traveling. It's his anniversary today. I saw on Facebook, happy anniversary, Matt Forbes. He was wearing a veil. I don't know. He was. Yeah, he and his wife were both wearing a veil in their wedding in some weird wedding picture. So, kind of interesting. Huh. Anyway, here's the point in time on Nightcap where we all raise a glass and say cheers to our week's accomplishments. Here's to you and here's to me and here's to Land Investing and Mark Podolsky. Uh, all all right. right. Are we going to dig into what the new ADHD is? Yeah, I think you should uh, rattle them off there, buddy. You want me to do it? Okay. I feel honored. If you need anything, just feel free to raise your hand. A uh, little recap, Mike, for those tuning in. Why are we doing this again? Well, we're talking about basically starting out in the business. There's some common frustrations people encounter, right? And we just kind of correlated it to, uh, to uh, you know, this ADHD. It's actually something, um, I think it was who, Roberto? Right? Yeah, Roberto Chavez. I think I saw him talking about this and it really sunk in. It, it really, when I heard it, it really, it sunk in and, and, and uh, I, it helped me realize truly what is provided when you get involved with the community, when you get involved with something like flight school, uh, particularly he was talking about flight school actually. Um, but so instead of being alone, the new way is accountability. And accountability, obviously, we're talking about the fact that this is now you've basically physically gone out and, and you know and you've you've spoken out loud and said i'm going to do this right and then there's people saying okay well we're going to make sure you do that because every week we're going to get together and meet we're going to talk about it and we're going to see if you've completed your task for the week and we're going to see what questions you have so you don't want to be the person showing up that's done nothing right it's going to be kind of hard you're going to come in there and feel really disappointed with yourself so you through that accountability develop the d discipline 
Nice. Discipline being the fact that you are now going to stick to something, right? There's going to be consistency. So you have this accountability. It creates a discipline, which is the consistency. And guess what happens if you do something long enough, Scott? What's it become? I think it becomes a habit. Habit. That's the H. So accountability, you know, it brings out the discipline and develops a habit. And if you have a habit and it's a good habit, you're going to deliver results. So the new ADHD, you had a loan, you had distracted, you had hungry and difficult, right? Well, we're trading that in. We're going to give you accountability, discipline, the habit, and we're going to deliver results. That is the new uh, ADHD. And that, you know, it's just, it's true though. That is really a very uh, real kind of description of what happens when you get involved, um, you know, with the community, right? Whether, you know, and listen, the epitome of this is flight school, right? Flight school and coaching where you really have that accountability. But on a lesser level, there's the same thing when you get involved in the community and Facebook, you can make yourself known and make statements that, and tell people your goals and whatnot. Um, you know, I think that's good. I think it's important to talk about goals, to not be afraid to express them and to go out and, you know, rework your mind. So you're not talking negative, you're talking positive. And that's going to bring about this change that's going to really move the business forward. So what do you think of that, Scott? Accountability brings the discipline, develops the habit, and that delivers results. What do you think? I think you're a genius. Uh, well, first, you I fought mean, your kind. You stole it from Roberto, but. I did. But I, but I, but I, but I referenced him. I quoted, I, I uh, totally in, the footnote, in the footnotes. <laughs> yeah, he's totally in the footnotes. He is the number one reference for your ADHD. And uh, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, um, Flight school and coaching bring all of those things which take you to the next level. And if you don't have somebody there pushing you forward, trying to, you know, hold you accountable for reaching those goals that you have, uh, it can be really difficult to move forward. If, if you're, you are your only, you know, inspirational source or motivational source, that can be difficult. So, so to have somebody else there, to help you along the way is, is phenomenal. And then as far as the discipline goes, I mean, I, I think now there is so much more information that comes forth in these programs and so much uh, the, the access to systems. It, I don't know, it, 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 encouraged, it, it encourages you to be dis, dis, disciplined in this and, yes. and to move forward. Um, go ahead. Yeah, no, I say it's important that you don't surround yourself with negativity, starting any venture, right? But we're talking about land investing. So, you know, what a good thing might, what not, might not be a good thing to do is somebody that's like, just go randomly tell people who aren't going to be supportive. Hey, I'm trying to say, oh, why are you doing that? Uh, or, you know, what do you, you know, that kind of negativity is not going to help, right? So you want to make sure that you talk about this with people that are going to be encouraging, you know? And so th there's great, um, a great group of people in our Facebook groups, right? That's where you find these people that are really supportive. And here's the other thing that I tell people, and I believe this, the magic of our business is truly conveyed in the stories of people who have already had success. Because when you hear that, and, and that's what's great about boot camp. I mean, you're surrounded by 50 or 60 people, all different levels of achievements in the business. Some are actually brand new, but then you can start to see the gradual development, the process of people going from newbie to doing a couple of deals to really becoming proficient in this business model. But you hear their stories when Mark does grill the geeks, right? And people get up in front of the, in front of the, uh, for those who haven't been to a boot camp, you get up there and you basically going to ask all these questions of people. And there's a the panel of people that are not Scott and myself and, and, you know, and, and Eric and, 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 uh, Tate and, and uh, Scott and Mark, we're talking, or Mimi, it's not, it's not us, that, it's people that are newer, that are having success. And, and it's just like, it's, it's kind of raw and, and recent. And it's awesome, because you get to hear their kind of real stories. And that's where the magic comes in. Yeah, the, 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 the stories are inspirational, for sure. I mean, they, they, they push you forward to want to change your own life. So yeah. You've been a geek that's been grilled. I have been. As of you. That's fun. I have. It is because, you know, people really come to the boot camp. Well, the people that come there, I should say, are very intelligent. So they're going to have very pointed and very direct and, you know, really well thought questions about, hey, what about this? What about that? So, and sometimes it catches you as a person being grilled off guard, but it makes you think, you know, and uh, it's really a great process for everybody. And so, 
Anybody who hasn't been to a boot camp, you know, you get tickets with the uh, uh, toolkit and flight school, right? Obviously coaching. Um, I think we still have some slots. I know Mark said it's filling up really fast, but Arizona, um, I heard it's going to be around like uh, 45 degrees and cool. Right. No, yes. that's not true. I'm Please. sorry. But we are Please. inside. There's AC. Don't be afraid of the heat. Come because you're going to come for the information and the knowledge. So uh, reach out to um, what's it, info at the land would probably be a great place to reach out for if you really want to take that step. And, What's so great about the uh, about the uh, um, boot camp, Scott, in your mind? Because we're talking. Because right now is the time we're bringing this up. Because I think it's important. Like we're right at the time you want to get committed if you're going to go in August. Yeah, for sure. So if you, if you guys want to do boot camp, we need to get you signed up, kind of ASAP. And I mean, like I said, that that was the second thing that that was the thing that pushed me over the edge uh, into making this amazing, life changing decision. So. And my wife, she, she pushed me over the edge. I was a little more nervous, but, but we went together in this. And, uh, uh, you know, if you have a partner to do this with, that, that's awesome. I think we talked about on the round table this week, the support of, of a spouse in this business and, and how powerful that can be. Um, the support of having partners in this business and how powerful that can be. So, you know, if you and a partner want to go to boot camp, you Contact Mike or I, you can uh, go to langeek.com slash training and schedule calls this that way or email us at uh, info at langeekguys.com and we'll get you to boot camp. And there's one other thing boot camp, uh, at boot camp, Mike, that's going to be really exciting. The second, the second episode, the second boot camp episode of Nightcap. Live. With guys. Yeah, we get to interview all of the coaches Mark's there, Scott, Tate, Eric, Mimi, um, Scott and I, are, it's going to be awesome. Listen, the boot camp is all day Friday, all day Saturday, half day Sunday, nothing but land investing. Mark drills you through the process over and over and over again. No matter where you are in this business, you will come out at a higher level because you'll be exposed to some real knowledge, some real inspiration, some really powerful stories. You get to grill the geeks. Uh, it, it's awesome. And, uh, it's interactive and everybody that goes to boot camp is actually no word of lie blown away by it because it's not what you would expect. It's not some kind of real stuffy, rigid thing where you're in the back or you're not way in the back with binoculars looking down. Is that Mark Podolsky down there? No, you're in a small room surrounded and he's engaging, asking questions, you know, don't be afraid if you're not really a, you know, extrovert out there. Like, like we're not going to like pick on you, but we're going to make sure you get a lot of knowledge and experience from the, from this, uh, from this boot camp. So, you should definitely sign up if you haven't yet. Check it out. All right. We've got some comments. we got some comments here, Mike. Comments. Comments. Uh, Margaret, Margaret LaRue says she likes the new ADHD better than the old one. Nice. I would agree with that. Uh, Andy Wilmer says the Facebook group is great. People are always willing to help. And the info that people want to give, the info that people give, uh, they don't have any uh, expectation for any type of return uh, in that. So, uh, I would have to say that, that, that is true, Andy. And honestly, that, that brings us into the next segment because I, I need to pick a Facebook, uh, wait, where are we? These, hand These handouts, seriously. Facebook quote of the week. And it is by Andy Wilmers, which is why I wanted to parlay off of that. Nice. So let me find um, having difficulty. By the way, nice backdrop, Scott. You like that? Yeah, I don't have one. Are you jealous? Wait a minute, I can go get one. Well, of course you can. Right now? You ready for the quote of the week? I'm looking at a backdrop. Go ahead. Oh, boy. All right, you ready? Yeah. Andy Walmer says yesterday, <clears throat> it is super refreshing talking to buyers instead of sellers. Sold property to my second buyer, who was ex super excited for a property. I thought I was having, uh, I thought I was having difficulty selling. Turns out it wasn't the property I was having issues with, but rather finding the right buyer. I talked to the guy on the phone from a cold call from one of my Craigslist ads. He was looking for property for his brother, but after telling him about the land, he was so excited he bought one for himself. He's talking to his brother now, and there's a good chance they will buy the second lot, quarter mile down the road. 
This shows we just got to keep marketing even when things get you down because you never know where the perfect buyer is going to come from. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that reminds you, what's Mark always say? And then, and then it's like someone buys from you. They don't just buy one. They get a brother, they got a family member. They have somebody else that can buy another one. So that, you know, double sell. That's awesome. What a very powerful story. Very powerful quote. Yeah. And, and the other thing is you never, you know, there are all kinds of different buyers out there. And uh, sometimes you just got to market to those people uh, to find them. And, you know, is it the weekend recreational enthusiast? Is it the person who never thought they'd be able to own a piece of land in their lives, but now they're able to with $100 a month? Uh, I know, I know the globe. It doesn't, I don't think it uh, compares. It doesn't even spin well. <laughs> I thought you were one of those flat earthers. You know what else I have on my desk? What do you got? It'd be very helpful to some people. Yeah, what's that? And have a time focusing. Oh, an hourglass. You want to do a task? Just give yourself a little bit of time. When it's done, you move on to the next task. Very simple, very direct. The hourglass. You know, we have an hourglass as a decoration it's like three feet high so that'd be hard to flip on my desk do you really can, does it can it work if you flip it yeah yeah we're gonna need to see that some night i'm gonna on. put that all right it's in my backdrop next week all right here we go uh oh andy has a comment in response to the facebook quote of the week the same guy is just finishing off paying for another property somewhere else this is the halfway point for the two brothers that's awesome that is awesome. Ah, sweet. So we went from ADHD to ADHD, right? I love it. No, I think, you know, it's a very good uh, transformation. I think that, you know, you look and nobody wants to be alone, distracted, hungry. Yeah, you want to be hungry, but you don't want it to be difficult. And the point is, it doesn't have to be difficult. That's exactly right. You don't have to suffer. You don't have There's to no suffer. no need. We have the recipe. One's a recipe for disaster. One's a recipe for success. You know? Um, so it's pretty cool. I like it, Scott. Good job on that. Uh, that anacronym. An uh, acronym. Acronym, not an acronym. Right? Acronym. Do I have you confused now? Is it an acronym or an acronym? It's not an anacronym. It's I think it's just an acronym. And Lisa said it's not an anacronym. It's just an anac anacronym. <laughs> yes, yes. Forget I it. Do. Forget it. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Any questions out there? Does anybody want to ask us anything? Yeah, we're here. Hit us up. Questions, comments. We are uh, going to roll out a brand new segment next now? week. Next is week's that? segment is going to be pretty epic. The it new is one. Be epic. We don't want to give any hints. I don't want to burst the bubble. Yeah, well, let's. Can I give a hint? Hey, do you want to pick a Do you want to pick a time right now on air? For uh, next nightcap. Next, what? When do you want to do it? Wednesday or Thursday? Mm. Next, I could do either one. Let's do Wednesday. Wednesday, it is at at ten Eastern. We're going to do 10 o'clock. Much, uh, there's going to be some happy people out there on the East Coast. West Coast, it doesn't matter. Three hour difference. 10 oh. Eastern. Sound good? Sounds awesome. All right, Wednesday night, art of the close. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You go in there just like that? That's all I said, though. I didn't say anything else. Okay. All right. Do you have, uh, do you have any shove it quotes of the week? I don't. You guys need to submit your sub shove it quotes of the week. Shove it quote of the week. Well, wait a minute. I do actually. Really? No, I do because I got a text from someone who's asked me a question. Uh, well, let me see. Can you do some kind of filler speech while I find it? All right. I have a question here. Uh, Scott Keelan says, hey, Scott, and Mike, just got the investor's toolkit. Three quarters of the way through it. I believe I get two coaching calls, which you do, Scott. Excellent. 
uh, what should be the subject of the first call? Well, I think commonly on those calls, uh, and I don't know about you, Mike, but I talk a lot about county research and list, list scrubbing. So those would probably be. Yeah, I say if you're going through the toolkit, go through it all. Like I said, a very simple pass through, like you're watching a nice little TV show. Then go back, focus on the beginning areas, really get into those, like really hyper focus on them, develop some good questions. And that, since that's the bedrock of what we do, that kind of research, I'd schedule a call around that point. But in my mind, that's what I would think would be good. Yeah, for sure. And I got the quote, shout out of the quote. Well, it's not, it's more of a um, guy says, Mike, I just got a guy that is so mad that I'm sending him offer letters that he said he's going to sue me for harassment. Can you do that? So it's not really a shove it, but it really is. The guy's like, hey, I'm going to sue you. You're harassing me. You sent me a letter that you want to buy my land. Can you do that? I've had people say that too. I don't think anybody's ever going to. It's just some sort of, uh, it, we're not doing anything uh, illegal or immoral. So there's nothing to worry about. This is a, it's a numbers game. Remember, three to 5% are going to accept. The other 95, 97%, Eh, not so much, right? It's a numbers game, but you can't, you got to have a little thick skin in the game. You got to realize you're going to have some people be angry. No one's really going to physically do anything uh, negative. They're just going to sometimes bark a little bit. We'll get these shove a quote of the weeks, but the reality is you got to be persistent. And I've had people literally call and just like rah, 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 rah. And I would talk them down, relax. And the next two seconds later, someone will call back and say, Hey, how do I get my hundred dollars? Right. It's just like, it's a numbers game. So um, I think that's kind of the shove a quote. Yeah, I think that's good. Bullshit. So, so much time you have left, Scott, <laughs> to ask questions. Uh, Eric Justin says, "How many time? How much time do you guys spend on Facebook marketing properties each week?" So, Eric, I think from what I know, the best advice would probably be: uh, I probably wouldn't do any more than one ad per Facebook account per day. Yeah, uh, that's typically what what we've been doing. He's talking yeah. to Craigslist or Facebook. He's asking about Facebook. Uh, okay. Eric just was asking about Facebook. Okay. Uh, how, many, how many Facebook marketing properties each week? So uh, Facebook, I think, is tightening down on their, uh, their, their algorithm a little bit or whatnot because I've gotten temporarily banned a few times. So uh, I'd say one property per day per account. The nice thing is you can post those to 20 different groups post that one ad to 20 different groups. Um, that's, that's what I'm doing currently. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you're on Facebook very much. I don't do a heck of a lot of Facebook and I don't do uh, personally any of the marketing. I have that on my marketing team takes care of that. So if you want to be like, how much time do I personally? Zero. Uh, my yeah. team on Facebook, not too much at this point. We're getting, I mean, um, with that Craigslist leads, it's just insane. You know, our salesperson has, um, all he can do to keep up with those and make those sales. So we just don't need it at this point. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's uh, many ways to skin this cat. We love that quote. I know you do, Scott. Uh, and the, so take it that way. All right. Awesome. Very good. Well, great. What do you think? I think that was great. I think, uh, do you have, have you been doing the toast every week? I don't know. I've been trying, I think I've done probably 99% of the toast. You've probably done a hundred. We don't want to ruin that streak. Yeah. Well, now your screen freezes when it comes time for the toast. Exactly. All right. So I was trying to find one about the success and vision and you know that type of thing. Like, I don't know. Let me see what I can find. I can give you one. You do it. Here's oh, wait, wait, wait. One thing. What? Wow, it was mid-sentence. I know, I know. Andy Walmers had an important question. Uh, on the topic of the free coaching calls, how do you redeem the coaching calls for the investor toolkit and flight school? They can just contact us, uh, Info at Land Geek guys. We can help them out. Yeah, exactly. One-stop Info shop. One-stop shop. One-stop shop. Contact us. We'll set you up. We'll set you up. We'll, co we'll, we'll coach you on those calls. So I don't have any kind of like Irish or Italian or one of those saying, I'm just going to say, because you do those so well, here's the hyper-focusing on the essentials. Excellent. 
And uh, I have to give props to your Facebook post today. That was very, very profound. Sometimes that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Sorry. I didn't see it till today. Now you're uh, not really current with my, oh, I see. I thought you were yeah. more. <laughs> Which, one, though? Which one? Which one are you talking about though? I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Very busy, man. Uh, the uh, enjoying the mic, the mackerel. Sometimes you have to, uh, what'd you say? Sometimes you have to forget the micro and embrace the macro. You know, I, the macro micro, it's a big thing in my life. I love looking at, you know, everything from the business model, but I was just outside and my, mm -hmm. I looked up and I saw the sky and it just overwhelms you with like just how incredibly uh, huge things are. And sometimes we take these problems we have and we hyper focus on them, but we can let that go. Uh, so embrace the macro. I always tell people micro macro and build this business model in a micro environment. You can buy land all day long for a few hundred dollars. So why not flush out the inefficiencies, get your systems in order and then scale it up. Micro macro. It's huge. Love it. Very good. My friend, let me get the uh, outro ready. Awesome. Special guest next week. We don't even know if we have a special guest next week. Actually we do. We will not... have a special guest. Yes, of course we will. Of course we will. Course Guys, we thanks for showing up tonight. I uh, hope there was uh, it was enjoyable to you. I know I enjoyed Scott's new background. Yeah, isn't uh, it nice? It's phenomenal. You guys ready? You're a jerk. We'll s oh, that's awesome. That was live, by the way. <laughs>